Hello, you speakers. I'm Katsam. I'm George. And I'm Javier. Many of our English learners need to be made aware of fluency and speaking fast. In previous podcasts, we, we've talked about fluency and we've given you plenty of tips on how to practice it and achieve it. But today we brought something new just to get you started. That is correct, Katza. Hey, you know, a fluency is one. I think it's the ultimate uh It's the ultimate goal of people, you know, when they're learning a language, isn't it? I want yeah. to be fluent in the language. I don't think anybody just says, oh, I want to learn English just halfway, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think this is a very, very interesting topic. Hey, <laughs> I'm going to take, a, I'm going to, you know, uh, steal a little bit about Javier's, you know, uh, uh, special section, right, about, you know, the interesting facts or fun facts. Oh, hey, cool. guys, did you know, did you know that there are, 273,000 words you know in the Oxford dictionary of English oh only half of those are in use but however the average educated English speaker will know and speak somewhere between 20 to 30,000 words mm -hmm. knowing just one to 3,000 words in English is sufficient to carry everyday conversation yeah so yes there are many many words but words matter but connecting words and meanings matters more yeah okay so uh it's very important that you keep this into consideration you know can you can native speakers understand what you're saying do you feel at ease speaking in english all right and we'll talk about more uh of what fluency is and how to improve your fluency in this episode Webster's Dictionary defines fluency as the ability to speak or write a foreign language easily and accurately and the keywords here guys are easily And accurately, that means just like George says, how easily do you convey your ideas? Do you actually speak it? Or do you have to um, 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 too much? And mm -hmm. three, and two, <clears throat> do I understand what you're saying? Or do you have to give me a lot of examples? Right. Ready? Okay. So stay tuned because today you're learning three secret ingredients for fluency. Welcome to another episode of the You Speak English podcast. Thank you for hitting that play button and subscribing to our podcast channel. Remember, you can download the script for this podcast. The link is in the description box below. Now, phrasal verb of the week. Do you know which phrasal verb is used to express production, creation, or devising something such as an idea, plan, or solution, or suggestion? Well, we use come up with. It implies the generation of something new or original, okay, often through thinking, brainstorming, or creative processes. For example, you might come up with a solution to a problem or come up with a new business idea. It emphasizes the act of bringing forth something from one's thoughts or imagination. Yeah, it, it does like self-explanatory, right? Like come up with, like it comes up through your, uh -huh. your Comes heart up to your to, head or something yeah, like that. Like yeah, to like the sounds, external sounds part cool. of your mind. I like right? it. I like it. Yeah. English fun yeah. facts, guys. Did you guys, did you know that English is the official language of the aviation industry? You didn't know I've that. I always wondered that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It is the official language when traveling by plane. In fact, pilots and flight attendants must establish communication with control towers only in English in the English language, regardless of the origin. So think about this. If you're in an airplane, all right, you're, you're you're traveling from Japan to Germany, how would they communicate the, tower, the airplane Ooh. to the tower? It would have to be English, English. of course. English oh, gosh. Yes. yes. So the now we know it's not only the language of business, but also traveling. And Aviation. as a matter of fact, Pilots have to pass a special English test that we can talk about later if you want. So it's sort of like a, like a tiles test, you know, speaking, but mm -hmm. it's a little more complicated because it has to be done between two people and it's regarding their industry, regarding like, wow. Well, oh. Yeah, it's a, it's a toughie. It's not That's easy. what I was going to ask you uh, because, you know, this is something super important, right? I mean, uh, people's lives are at stake here. So, yeah. you know, language and communication is essential to be accurate. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you want to work yeah. in the aviation industry, it, that, passing that test will also obviously get you to be from co-pilot to captain. But it is hard. You know why? Because, you know, let's say, for example, I asked George a question and then Katza, you have to ask him questions regarding his answer. So you don't know what he's going to answer. 
Right. It's a t- it's a tough exam. Okay. If you guys ever want to talk about it, we'll talk about it in the next couple of yeah, podcasts. Yeah, sure. So Sounds really stay tuned. Stay tuned. All right. All right. Yes. Yes. And actually, that's and this is something that lots of people may not believe to be true, but that's why they make the big bucks, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It, it, oh, it's because yeah. they 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 have professionalized their English so deep that uh, that's why they make the big bucks. I don't know. Besides uh, learning guys, how to uh, fly a pilot a plane, right? But I don't know how wow. much, but I remember back, let's say about 15 years ago, 15 years ago, a pilot in um, a national airline that I won't say the name, but it has the name, same name of the country, <laughs> was, making, was making about 60 grand a month. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah about 15 back years in the, ago. Back in the day. Back in the day. Now so it's close to mind, 200 then now. Yeah, it, it's pretty high up there, guys. Now, keep in mind, you're a pilot and you're traveling and the company will pay for your hotel, your meals, your everything. You yeah. only spend gas to get to the airport. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. it. <laughs> so you're awesome. saving it. They pay oh, for wow. your uniform. They for, pay for your cleaning of your uh, uniform. I think I'm going to change careers. I want to be a pilot. Fly, <laughs> at least late. flight attendant. <laughs> at least a flight attendant. Yeah. <laughs> at least flight attendant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm, I, I I would go yeah. uh-huh. all the way to learn how to pilot a plane. But yeah, well, those uh, girls, have you ever seen those girls from Dubai Airlines? Those, well, those yeah. girls speak English very well. Yeah, they do. Very well. Yeah, they do. All right. Now, to the main topic. Today's episode is all about making your English sound more natural and, of course, achieving that elusive fluency. In previous podcasts, we have talked about fluency and what it is. And obviously, uh, there are other elements to fluency. But today, we would like to talk about three major ingredients just to get you started uh, with that aspirational goal is that it is to be fluent. Yeah. So let's talk about ingredient number one. Why are contractions so crucial, George? Well, you know, contractions are like the secret sauce of fluent English. They're shortened versions of words formed by combining two words and replacing one or more letters with an apostrophe. Uh, for instance, uh, the com- the combination of the words they are, instead of saying they are, we can just say they're, okay? And there are many, many more examples uh, of, apost- of, of contractions. Yeah. That's right. So one thing you need to remember about contractions is that we use them only in spoken English when we speak. Therefore, when you read a text in English somewhere different from your English books, you'll never find them. Sometimes though, I have to admit, Sometimes in yeah. emails, texting, um, info, and texting informal is, or texting is informal mm-hmm. emails, it is allowed. But on the other hand, try not to. Books or articles? Not to, but particularly emails. Yeah, try not to use mm-hmm. Now yeah. that official, like, yeah. official uh, documents, no, that's a big no-no. Oh, that's Contracts, a big no-no. Yes. Yeah. yeah, essay is something that you're going to write for uh, for someone else. For school. Um, or... Yeah, for school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's usually a no-no. Now, another contraction we can use is by putting the, the, the subject, the, the pronoun, I, you, he, she, it, you know, with will, and we'll get I'll, you'll, and so on. So everything we ever teach you guys in class, there's got to be a contraction. Use it because that's what you will hear. That's right. And remember that there might be some contractions that are a bit confusing. For instance, contractions with the words had or would, in which Contractions are basically the same, apostrophe D. Like when we say, I'd rather stay home, which is would. Or he had taken the right medication, which is really he had taken the right medication. Wow. Okay, now let's discuss ingredient number two, linking. Let's remind our audience what exactly linking is. Well, as simple as this. Merge the end of a word with the beginning of the next one. For example... Instead of saying, I don't know, try, I don't know, with a link N sound. Now, here's the challenge. Next time you're watching your favorite TV show, try to identify at least three of these linking examples and leave those in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. All right. Okay, right. Now, let's discuss ingredient number three, reduce forms. Okay, utilize reduce forms or words like gonna instead of going to or wanna instead of want to. 
These informal expressions are common in casual speech. Here are a few more examples of reduced forms. Got to, gotta, I gotta go. Kind of, kinda. She's kind of sweet, okay? Sort of, sorta. Should have, shoulda. You, sh you should have called me. What happened? Okay. Would have, woulda, and could have, coulda. You know what comes to mind, guys, to practice this? Songs. Just oh, a, yeah. about almost all of the songs from the 80s, 90s, they had some sort of contraction like this. Right. And the one yeah. in particular that comes to mind also is the song from Bad Boys. Remember the song? Bad oh, Boys. Oh, yeah. Bad Boys. What, what, what you, you gonna, gonna do? do? What you gonna <laughs> do with it? What, what, what you gonna do? When the cops is, come for you. Exactly. So what are you going to do? It's, nah, it's too long. Nah. <laughs> what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Huh? So okay. I, I have a question, guys. So students, when they're in, uh, what do you recommend for students to use? Uh, these reduced forms or the complete forms when they're speaking with a native? Oh no, reduce. Reduce. Totally, totally, totally. Especially in the casual in the casual setting. Once okay. you already broke the ice, you know, you're you're on a first name basis. Yeah. You're gonna hear this. You're gonna hear this a lot. You know, particularly nowadays, you know, you guys if you notice uh, George, uh, when you and I started out, our boss was Mr. So and so. Do you remember that? Yeah. And now nowadays your Bob could be Bob, Bill. You mm -hmm. don't call him Mr. or Mrs. Do you remember that? Yeah, it used to be more formal. You used to dress, you know, anybody who's uh, your superior with Mr. or Mrs. would end their last name. Right. Now, you know, it's time change for the better, I think. In this case, it's just like, hey, Tony. Hey, Bob. Yeah. Hey, Zav. I really yeah. don't see myself calling, hi, Mr. George. <laughs> hey, George. No, this is Mr. Gardea. <laughs> Mr. Gardea, Mr. no. Gardea. When they well, say, that... when, when my boss said it that way, I don't know. It was kind of a daunting. <laughs> I knew I was going to get scolded for something. <laughs> Mr. Gardea, may I have a word with you? I said, ooh. And my, and then somebody would say, can I keep your locker? Oh, we love that. I just love that. <laughs> was like, Mr. Gardea, can I see you in my office? And it was like, oh, can I have your locker? <laughs> we love that one. Yeah, I remember, I remember that. Uh, good times, good times. <laughs> All right. So now it's time to challenge yourselves by using these skills in casual conversations. And that's it. That brings us to the end of our episode. Let's wrap it up, guys. Uh, yeah. Okay. You know, we're with Mr. Gardea and Mr. Savaleta. This is a very, you know, <laughs> <laughs> interesting topic and there's so much to talk about fluency but we'll as Katz has said we'll we'll address it in you know further uh, episodes but for now before you leave okay just ask you just remember ask yourselves these questions number one can i express my ideas effortlessly okay two do i struggle to find the right words for the or for a certain situation three can native speakers understand what i say and four do I feel comfortable speaking English? Five, do I speak at a normal pace? And six, can I understand native speakers easily? These questions will let you know how fluent you really are. And remember, kids, Mr. Fluency is married to Mrs. Coherence, and they insist on walking hand in hand. So you might be very fluent, but if I don't understand what you're saying, you're not. Mm -hmm. So keep it together. Sad but true. Yeah, yeah. Heavy hitter. <laughs> all right. This is it for today. Thank you to all of our audience for tuning in. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider subscribing to our channel and sharing it with your friends. Also, remember to check out our YouTube channel where you can find the video version of this podcast. Feel free to leave a comment on our videos too. Lastly, visit our website to find articles about English practice and learning. And Please don't forget to follow us on social media or you will find us as at USBK English, the one with the yellow logo. We're everywhere except for X and threads. And remember, perfect practice makes perfect. All right. Until next time. Bye-bye. See you then. <laughs>